June and Jennifer Gibbons were identical twins who grew up in the United Kingdom. Like many twins, they were born with a bond, but these twins had a bond deeper than anything anyone had ever seen. When June and Jennifer first began to speak, they developed a speech impediment which made their words unintelligible, even to their parents, but they could understand each other just perfectly. They made a pact to only speak to each other and spent all of their time together. When people tried to separate them, the girls would go into a catatonic state. Jude and Jennifer were really connected, but as they got older, being connected was the last thing either of them wanted. The girls had both spent their entire life ostracized and isolated, and they just wanted to live a normal life. When they entered their teen years, they both had a growing yearning for independence. The girls fought many times, blaming the other for their suffering. They would even describe each other as a dark shadow and as fatal enemies. In 1981, the twins were arrested for arson and sentenced indefinitely to a maximum security hospital for the criminally insane. During their stay in the hospital, their mental health deteriorated greatly. It became clear to both June and Jennifer that in order for one of them to live a normal life, one of them has to die. Then, as June and Jennifer were being transferred to another hospital, Jennifer was pronounced dead on arrival. Her death is a mystery experts today still have no answers for. This is The Silent Twins. June and Jennifer Gibbons were born on April 11, 1963 to Caribbean immigrants Gloria and Audrey Gibbons. Gloria and Audrey quickly realized their daughters were different when they hit speaking age. The twins spoke their own private language. The language barrier made it hard for June and Jennifer to make friends at school. On top of that, they were regularly bullied for the way they spoke, behaved, and because they were the only two black women in the entire community. The school was forced to release the girls earlier than the other students so that they would avoid getting bullied. This led the girls to create a pact to not speak to anyone other than each other. As the twins got older, their language became completely unintelligible to others. It was decided that it would be best to separate the twins by sending them to different boarding schools. The hope was that they would be forced to communicate openly. Instead, June and Jennifer became withdrawn stiff and unresponsive when they were eventually brought back together they proved as close as they already were that it was possible to get closer they shunned the world only communicated to their parents through written letters and spent most of their time in their bedroom june and jennifer's little sister rose who shares the bedroom with them was the only person they would speak to they spent most of their time playing with dolls and creating plays eventually the twins would get into creative writing they hoped to become successful novelists to make their family proud. The girls pulled through their money together to publish Pepsi Cola Addict, written by June. The story is about a high schooler who was seduced by his teacher, then sent off to a reformery where a gay guard makes a play for him. It was unsuccessful, as were their other attempts to publish novels. Although they didn't publish any more writings, they did keep a detailed journal of their innermost thoughts and feelings. When the twins turned 18, they felt it was time to get out of their bedroom and explore the world. That summer, they left and met American twin boys in a village called Eastgate. The boys were on the run for arson and theft. They introduced June and Jennifer to the world of drugs, alcohol, and love. Care for the boys and the amp. Okay, so they cared for the boys, and that made their relationship violent. Jennifer attempted to strangle June with a wire, and June pushed Jennifer into a river. They wanted to be free from each other and live a normal life. Eventually, the boys had to return to America, and they left June and Jennifer a note to say goodbye. June and Jennifer were crushed, but would describe that summer to be the best experience of their lives. 
After the boys left, the girls committed a series of crimes. They committed theft, vandalism, and arson. In 1981, the girls were arrested and sentenced to a maximum security hospital. There were two other hospitals with lighter security, but other hospitals found the girls to be too creepy. The twins started in the same cell and then were separated after they got into a fight. When separated, the twins were withdrawn and unresponsive. It became a cycle, being separated and put together. They found both experiences unbearable. June and Jennifer did not speak to anyone. Some days, only one twin would eat, and the next day, the other would eat as her sister starved. Other times, the nurses would find them frozen in the same pose, even though they were in cells on opposite ends of the hospital. The doctors were mystified by the twins' strange behavior. They found the twins disturbing and dangerous. The twins were then diagnosed with schizophrenia and were regularly given tranquilizers along with antipsychotics. June and Jennifer described being on the drugs as they're forgetting who they were. They began to talk freely on the drugs to anyone. After a while, the girls began to talk freely without the drugs as well. The girls made good progress on that front. It made the girls hopeful they could get out sooner rather than later. When June confronted one of the doctors about getting out because of their progress, the doctor responded, You're not getting out. You're going to be here for 30 years. Year after year, the twin sentence was extended until it was 10 years and counting. June got so desperate she sent a letter to the queen asking for a pardon with no success. They lost hope. June would describe this hospital to be their years in hell. June and Jennifer came to a conclusion. They decided that in order for one of them to truly live, the other has to die. Jennifer agreed to be the one to give up her life. She would sacrifice herself to allow her sister to live. On March 9th of 1993, June and Jennifer were being transferred to a hospital with lighter security but on the way they were there, Jennifer would become extremely weak and unresponsive. She was pronounced dead later, that day due to the sudden inflammation of her heart, a rare disorder that is rarely lethal. There was no evidence of poison in her system or anything else unusual. Her death remains a mystery, but doctors deduced that the medication given to Jennifer provoked her immune system. However, June was given the same medicine and was perfectly healthy. A year later, June was released from incarceration. She describes feeling an immense amount of grief and freedom. Freedom from imprisonment and from her intense bond with her sister. I feel as if I'm living for her. I live one day for me and one day for her. June now lives a quiet and independent life in Wales. She is accepted by her community and speaks to anyone that will listen.